This video is sponsored by War Thunder. Whether we like it or not, the People's Republic of China is a force to be reckoned with. Perhaps for too long, the West has considered China a nation of high quantity but low quality, a nation that only advances its own technology by copying others, a nation that perhaps does not build good armoured vehicles. And 40 years ago, they may have been right. But nowadays, we see a modern, capable China emerging as a serious strategic competitor, with its own missile systems, aircraft carriers, stealth aircraft, and importantly, tanks. And I don't know about you, but before making this video, I personally knew almost nothing about Chinese armoured vehicles. To me, they were just a mess of sort of Soviet-looking vehicles with strange, inconsistent names. I didn't know what guns they used, how much armour they had, or who designed them. I probably couldn't have even told you the name of more than two of them. So this video is the result of my research. An idiot's guide to Chinese tank development, presented by a fellow idiot. And luckily for us, it's all surprisingly simple. Let's dive in. To clarify, this is a video on Chinese tank development. So our journey actually only starts in 1956. Before then, the various Chinese armies whether they were warlords, nationalists, communists, or whatever else, used an almost ridiculous assortment of foreign vehicles. Everyone tended to send their preferred Chinese faction, their old tanks, for a period of about 30 years. It was a pretty spectacular mess. It was only once Mao and the Chinese communists won the civil war that they could start to standardise, naturally around ex-Soviet T-34-85s, which they received nearly 2,000 of in the early 1950s. A treaty of friendship, alliance and mutual assistance was signed between the two nations, and the Soviets agreed to help China build their own tank factory, to make Soviet T-54A tanks. Every single vehicle in this video can trace its lineage back to this factory making these tanks. Initially, these T-54s were made with imported Soviet parts, but gradually, as Chinese production capabilities improved, these were replaced with domestic components. These vehicles were accepted into People's Liberation Army service in 1959, and so were known as the Type 59. Oh look, the confusing designation alarm. Okay, in this video you will see three main types of designation, sometimes for the same vehicle. Some, usually the earlier tanks, will be referred to as the Type plus year entered service, like the Type 59. All, or at least most of these, will have a corresponding WZ number, which is their industrial designation before they enter service. So, prototypes that didn't enter service will often be referred to by only their WZ number, sort of like the Soviets' object numbers. However, nobody seems to know the exact time this system came into being, so while the Type 59 is sometimes referred to as the WZ-120, it probably wouldn't have been called that back in the 50s. But it does give us a nice way to talk about prototypes even if it's slightly inaccurate at times. More modern vehicles will sometimes replace the type with a role-specific three-letter code. There's a huge number of these for obvious reasons, but all the vehicles, or most of them in this video, will be ZTZs, which means armoured tank medium. So, the Type 59 would be the ZTZ-59, the Type 99 is the ZTZ-99, etc. In the video, I'll try and stick to using just type for my own sanity, but I'd always wondered the difference myself. Anyway, back to 1959. The Type 59 was a near-perfect copy of the T-54A, which meant that it didn't have the IR searchlight or a two-plane stabilizer for the 100mm gun that was added on the T-54B. Then there's not really much else to say, apart from the fact they made a lot of them, over 10,000 in just over 20 years, and this was sort of fine for a while. The Chinese had a capable, modern medium tank, and were excited to see what their best friends across the border would give them next. Oh, wait, everything has suddenly changed and they now hate each other. Yes. Once Stalin died, USSR decided not to be quite so insane. Khrushchev began a radical de-Stalinization program and even argued that the East and West could coexist peacefully. The People's Republic, on the other hand, seemingly wanted the Soviets to just nuke everyone and called de-Stalinization revisionist imperial nonsense. 
What do you think of the Russians? Are the Russians really so bad? Yes, I think the Soviet Union uh, is very bad. The Chinese essentially accuse Khrushchev and the Soviets of not being real communists anymore. And as relations completely collapsed in the early 1960s, it became clear that they were friends no longer. The Sino-Soviet split. This meant that China had to design their own tank, their first. This began under the project name 121, and in 1966 the first prototype appeared. Project 121 was essentially an improved Type 59, with a new 580 horsepower engine, a 100mm smoothbore gun, a laser rangefinder, and a whole host of other improvements that brought it roughly on par with the T-55. But in one of the Sino-Soviet skirmishes of 1969, the Chinese managed to capture a new toy, a T-62. And you can take command of your own T-62, as well as most of the Chinese vehicles in this video, in this video's sponsor, War Thunder. It's the most accurate, comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made, with over 2,500 planes, tanks, helicopters and ships you can control from 10 separate nations. From biplanes and armoured cars, to nuclear bombers and main battle tanks, it's up to you. War Thunder is an incredibly immersive experience, with detailed vehicles, realistic graphics and effects, and an in-depth damage model. You can target your enemy's most vulnerable components and watch your rounds impact realistically with the game's X-Ray damage feature. Join over 70 million players from all over the world in insane PvP battles across the three different game modes, arcade, realistic and simulation, that allow you to really play your own way. And you can also look your own way, using the in-depth customization system that includes camouflage, markings, decals and decorations for whatever vehicle you decide to play. Play War Thunder now for free on either PC or console, and using the link in the description, new players, or those who haven't played in over 6 months, will get a massive bonus pack that includes multiple premium vehicles, the exclusive Eagle of Valor decoration, 100,000 silver lines, and 7 days premium account time. Don't miss out. But yes, back to that T-62. Using this captured example, the Chinese engineers were able to incorporate some more advanced technologies into Project 121 like reverse engineering the Luna infrared searchlight. The tank went into production in 1969, making it the Type 69. It was the first Chinese tank to have a smoothbore gun, to fire APFSDS rounds, to have two-plane stabilization, and to be able to fight in the dark. But it suffered a lot from a lack of Soviet help. While it was impressive, they didn't really have the experience or the infrastructure to produce it rapidly or to a high quality especially as the violence and unrest from Mao's cultural revolution raged across China. By the time the tank went into limited service in 1974, there were fewer than 100 Type 69s in the PLA's inventory. It was better than the Type 59 for sure, but it was no M60, Chieftain or T-72. Meanwhile, they'd also developed a light tank from the Type 59, the Type 62, which was basically a teenier, tinier T-54. It was 15 tons lighter, with smaller dimensions, thinner armour and a reduced electronic suite, as well as an 85mm rifled main gun. It looks imposing due to the reputations of its bigger, scarier brother, but with a maximum frontal armour of around 50mm and only that 85mm gun, it was not a massive threat on the battlefield. A similar turret to that used in the Type 62 was also used on the amphibious Type 63, which, despite borrowing many of its design features from the Soviet PT-76, was a completely different vehicle. It was replaced in PLA service by a modernised version, the Type 63A, which itself is being replaced by the ZLT-05, which I'll talk about later. But I digress. The Type 69 was fine, but the PLA wanted better. They wanted a true modern vehicle, and so a programme began to design one. In the meantime, they looked for ways to keep their existing fleet of Type 59 and Type 69 vehicles relevant. The Type 69-2 was a successful export variant, with an improved rifled 100mm gun, a modern fire control system, new storage racks, track skirts, etc. Pakistan and Sudan produced them under license, Iran bought 500, and Iraq bought over 1500. However, the big improvement arrived in the 1980s, when relations between China and the West began to cool. This meant that China could, somewhat surprisingly, get their hands on the 105mm L7 gun as well as advanced Western electronics. Immediately, these new technologies and the L7 gun went into both the Type 59 and the Type 69. 
The upgraded Type 59s were known as the Type 59-2, while the 105mm armed upgraded Type 69s got their own designation, Type 79. Which is quite annoying as the vehicle only went into production in 1984, but who knows. We are about halfway through now, and I hope you've been taking notes. If you've managed to make it this far, I assume you're at least somewhat enjoying yourself, and I'd ask if you'd consider liking the video or even subscribing. You can support me on Patreon for as low as $2 a month, and get the video a day early, ad-free, and access my patron-only videos in my vault for just $2. Now let's get into some of the more interesting stuff. Behind the scenes, the PLA had been working away on the next generation of Chinese vehicles, using what they had learned from a slightly disappointing Type 69 and Type 79 to create their first main battle tank, the Type 80. And while the Type 80 retained the turret of the Type 69 and 79 along with a 105mm L7, the hull was heavily modified. The lengthened hull housed a 730 horsepower turbocharged diesel engine at the back and boasted a significantly improved drivetrain using six smaller road wheels with return rollers rather than the slightly archaic five wheel arrangement of the T54. This gave the Type 80 a smoother ride and a lower profile, but did make it slightly more complicated to produce. But it was not yet a winner. Trials of even the upgraded Type 80 1 and the export Type 80 2 with a lot more Western tech showed that. While it was superior to many countries' existing vehicles, it was a lot more expensive and not as impressive as the newest versions of the T-72 being offered by the USSR. Regardless, the improved Type 80-1 was adopted by the PLA and given the designation Type 88. This was a Type 80 with further modifications, mostly internal. New fire control system, a redesigned breech for a higher rate of fire, and a heavier reliance on Western electronics. This was the cheaper and simpler method and around 300 of them are apparently still in service with the PLA. The other train of thought produced the Type 85, which is actually, you know, interesting. Finally, after 30 years, we have a new turret, a welded turret. The Type 85 Storm was envisioned as a brand new export tank, with Pakistan emerging as a key customer. The shiny new welded turret incorporated modern composite armour and a new Chinese 105mm gun to get around export laws. Still little interest. Then the Gulf War happened. Suddenly it became apparent that the protection of legacy Soviet vehicles like the T-54 and T-62 as well as the Chinese made Type 59 and Type 69 was completely inadequate. As in 1991, Western tanks like the Abrams and the Challenger smashed through thousands of Iraqi tanks while taking shockingly minor damage and making it clear to everyone that tanks can absolutely be obsolete. So that's perhaps why the upgraded Type 85 saw more interest, with its composite armour allegedly being able to protect against 125mm APFSDS rounds fired by the Soviet T-72. And at this point they actually had managed to get a T-72 of their own buying one from Romania in the early 1980s. The technologies inside this T-72 would have a massive effect on Chinese tank development. Undergoing extensive trials and tests under the name Type 64, the Romanian T-72 would form the backbone of China's next significant main battle tank project, which at this point was known as the 123. However, in the meantime, they reverse engineered the 125mm smoothbore gun of the T-72 as well as its carousel autoloader, and fitted this to the Type 85-2 prototype, creating the Type 85-2 AP, which finally was accepted by the Pakistanis. Success. It was such a success, in fact, that the Chinese also adopted it in 1997, giving it the designation Type 96 and publicly revealing it at a parade celebrating the country's 50th anniversary. The Type 96 would soon see its own upgrade program, with the turret front changing shape to a wedge of composite armour not unlike that seen on later models of the Leopard 2, an upgraded engine, chunkier FY4 ERA blocks, better optics and fire control systems, and a slightly redesigned rear hull. This upgraded vehicle will be known as the Type 96A and is now the most numerous tank in the PLA's inventory. With over 1,000 Type 96s in service alongside 1,500 Type 96As. Remember that Romanian T72 and Project 123 
Well, the Type 96 was not the only vehicle revealed in that 1999 anniversary parade. There was also this, the ZTZ, or Type 98. This vehicle was a completely new design, and was largely unrelated to the Type 96 and its ancestors. It had a massive 1200 horsepower engine, an upgraded drivetrain, and even thicker composite armour in a slightly different welded turret. It did share the Type 96's 125mm smoothbore gun and carousel autoloader, which were ported over from the T-72. The Type 98 was only built in limited numbers, and is widely considered to just be the first production phase of China's most modern vehicle, the Type 99. This added a composite wedge to the front of the turret, had a lot more ERA, better side and rear protection for the turret, along with a host of smaller improvements. It was soon dethroned though by this, the Type 99A, China's most capable armoured vehicle to date. The Type 99A is the pinnacle of Chinese tank development, by all accounts an incredibly effective modern MBT, with no reason to think it couldn't go head to head with any western equivalent. Compared to the regular Type 99, the A model has redesigned suspension, deeper side skirts and a much larger 1500 horsepower engine, allegedly propelling the vehicle to up to 75 km per hour. It has a new smoothbore gun that can fire the Invar ATGM, third generation ERA, a new active protection system, as well as better optics and better electronics. China currently operates around 700 Type 99As and 600 Type 99s, alongside 2500 Type 96s, 300 Type 88s, and surprisingly nearly 600 Type 59s. Naturally, the plan is to replace these as soon as possible, but they're still very much in service today. MBTs aside for a moment, they also recently revealed their new light tank, the ZTQ-15, or Type 15. It's designed to be lightweight and operate at the high altitudes needed for much of China, where heavier vehicles would just struggle. It boasts an upgraded 105mm gun with a bustle autoloader, but can tackle heavier targets with 105mm ATGMs equipped with tandem heat warheads. It sort of just appeared one day and is apparently already in service, but we don't know all that much about it. Of course, I have not gone into a huge amount of detail on many of these vehicles, and there were many vehicles I didn't have time to touch on at all. The Type 90 was another development of the Type 85 family, leading to the Pakistani MBT-2000, which they operate as the Al Khalid. The Type 89 was a rear turreted tank destroyer that saw limited service but looked quite cool. The Type 05 is a family of amphibious armoured vehicles, one of which, the ZTL-05, mounts a 105mm gun. The WZ-122 and WZ-132 you may have heard of, both of which were prototypes developed around the same time as the Type 69. The WZ-111 was a failed heavy tank project roughly comparable to the T-10. The WZ-130 or Type 5916 were debatably fake names for the failed competitor to the Type 62. The Type 62G was an upgrade consisting of a new turret and 105mm gun. And the WZ-141 was a strange little tank destroyer with Ricola's rifles on top. Thanks again to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to play it now for free on PC, PlayStation or Xbox by using my link in the pinned comment or video description. New or returning players that haven't played in 6 months on all platforms will also receive that bonus pack that includes multiple premium vehicles and other goodies. It's available for a limited time only so make sure not to miss it. And with that, I think we're just about done. Hopefully you now feel educated on the bizarre world of Chinese tank development. Maybe you're still a little confused. Either way, do consider subscribing for more content like this and check out my recent videos if you enjoyed. Thank you to my lovely Patreon supporters for making this video possible and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.